Hi, I'm Stacy Triklis, and I'm going to show you a little bit about Adobe Captivate. Uh, the current version is 5. CS 5.5, uh, and you can get a 30-day trial of this product at adobe.com. Uh, it is a product that does simulations of all sorts, uh, mostly based on your desktop and uh, the programs that you have. So it basically, it takes screenshot movies, uh, not unlike the product that I'm using, which is Camtasia, um, except Captivate takes this a little bit further. It seems sort of weird that I'm doing a Camtasia about a Captivate, but... Um, otherwise, I couldn't show you the nifty, cool beginning screen um, that welcomes you to Captivate. So I will just sort of show you a very brief introduction. There are many uh, in-depth tutorials of all different sorts available um, at Adobe.com and elsewhere for Captivate uh, in all its versions. Uh, some of the earlier tutorials, um, you know, for Captivate's version, you know, four and below might not be as helpful, but if you do run across them, um, sometimes they can be useful. It really depends, uh, but they have made some significant changes in Adobe Captivate 5.5, so um, it's worth trying the new version and looking for uh, demonstrations that concentrate on the newer version, CS, CS5 or CS5.5, because the, 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 those two are not too dissimilar from each other. So um, with that in mind, when you first install Captivate, which does take a little time, especially if you, if you have a slow internet connection, um, you will be welcomed by uh, this entrance screen where you can create various types of projects. Uh, software simulations might be what you decide to use. Um, you can actually create simulations, um, and, well, Captivate projects based on PowerPoints. Uh, which is something that you can check out. Basically, it kind of flashifies your PowerPoint and makes it a little bit more interactive. You can do some things with it. You can add videos inside your PowerPoint and that sort of thing. You can do a slideshow, just a basic slideshow. Um, there's other templates available to you that you can either, and you can create your own templates as well if you really get into this product and start to do a lot of similar things. You can use templates to uh, put those product projects together. Um, and there's something called an aggregator project too, which you probably won't do much with, but basically it allows you to aggregate data from different sources um, in order to create string together a project. Uh, I'm going to start with a software simulation, uh, which is more than likely one of the things that you are going to be doing in your own, um, you know, in your own work. So for example, let's say I'm going to teach something about Microsoft Word. Uh, so I'll bring up Word here so I can set my stage, so to speak. And I'll bring it up so that we can, um, maybe we're just going to demonstrate how to change styles. So I'll go ahead and go with um, application instead of a screen area. I could do a screen area and set it for a custom size, uh, set it for the full screen. So, you know, it'll just take a picture of the entire screen. Uh, I can set it for a specific size, 640 by 480 or some other um, available size. It can customize straight to iPhone 4, iPhone 3, uh, iPads. Uh, the YouTube, you know, either widescreen or non-widescreen YouTube or some other standardized size. I'm going to go ahead and go with application. So it will be as big as my Microsoft Word Document 1 window. And you can see that the red outline goes around it. Recording type, um, you can decide how this is going to work for you. You can do full motion where it is capturing your movement of your mouse as you go and giving you all full motion throughout. Uh, manual, um, manual in Captivate, um, what it does is it's taking shots, pictures of your screen as you go. So manually, um, if you were to have it do, do it that way, you kind of have to tell Captivate when you want it to take a, a shot of what you're doing. Um, that can be kind of annoying, especially if you're trying to do a large tutorial. I would probably leave it on automatic, just so that it's 
sort of out of your mind. You don't have to worry about it. It does a pretty good job with the automatic uh, capturing. And then you can tell it what sort of um, simulation you're doing. A demonstration, an assessment, a training, some other sort of uh, form. Um, I might try an assessment. Since yours is going to be an interactive element, uh, probably an assessment or a training would be good because then there's going to be an opportunity to add in um, the ability for the user to input something. If it's just a demonstration, what's going to happen is they're just going to be able to watch, kind of like what you're doing now. Do you want it to do any kind of panning with your mouse? Maybe, yes or no. Uh, do you want to be able to speak and have it narrated? Your choice. You can use your microphone and actually have it do some narration, um, you know, speak, just like I'm doing here with my Camtasia. So it's your choice. You can explore further settings as well and really get into um, the type of mode that you're dealing with. You can uh, also have it add automatically text captions. I would actually recommend that you go ahead and look at the settings at least the first time that you do a, a Captivate so that you can see what your options are. Um, converting tooltips to rollover captions might be fun. That way anytime a uh, tooltip comes up as you're going through menus and that kind of thing, it will actually be a caption that comes up and um, on mouse rollover. Kind of handy. Show mouse location and movement probably a good thing, um, but it does depend. Um, highlight boxes when you click, so it'll actually kind of bring up a little box around your mouse when you click on something, could also be useful. Um, there's all kinds of options here. You might want to experiment with, experiment with a few and find out which ones um, are going to work best for you. You might find that you don't want the highlight boxes or you'd rather add the text captions yourself, uh, which you can do after you've done a recording. Sometimes the, those things can be not as helpful. It really depends on your situation. I'm going to leave some of these things on for now. And I'm also going to look at some of these other settings just so I can see what's available. Narration um, settings are available here. All kinds of, um, you know, full motion recording, drag and drop actions, all sorts of things are available. Full motion recording mode, of course, everything is full motion instead of quick screenshots that are just still pictures. Um, it is your choice which one you use. Obviously, this uh, the full motion mode, kind of like what you're seeing with Camtasia, um, does take up a little bit more uh, bandwidth, and you know it'll be a larger file to share, which is not always a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing uh, if you have users that have really slow connections at home. So that's something to think about. You do have some shortcut keys um, that you can set, you know, customize for yourself if you want to. If you're going to become a Captivate Power user, this isn't a bad place to look. Uh, and as far as some of these other styles, do you want a custom caption style where you've got um, specific colors and things like that? You can choose all that stuff on your own. That's what it looks like uh, off the bat, and that's that's not so bad. The blue with the uh, with the black text actually looks okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this for now. And I think I'm ready to record my Microsoft Word simulation. You get a 3 two, one and then you can start recording. So let's see. And you can always, if you make a mistake, you can always edit this later. You can, let's see, we're, oh, that's right, we were editing styles. So we need to teach people about editing styles. And you'll notice every time you click on something, you'll get a little camera shot. You'll also get uh, little text uh, clicks, you know, keyboard clicks if you type text. You can remove these, uh, these kinds of sound effects if you don't want them. If they're annoying to you, you can remove them. But that's the default setting. 
But if I'm teaching people how to go with styles, I can go straight here and see and explain. This is heading one, this is heading two. Let's say I want to make that text heading two, I would just click it from the styles menu, correct? And so uh, perhaps now I'm done. Maybe this is just a short one. I click on the little uh, Captivate icon up there and it will stop the recording. There's a shortcut key for that as well, but that's an easy way to do it. So this is my Untitled Assessment and I will make this a little bigger so that we can see it. So this is your Captivate um, workspace. And as you scroll around, you'll get the tooltips that will show you, um, you know, what these different icons do. Just like an Adobe product, there are a large number of windows that may or may not be useful to you, but most of them are fairly useful because these are the properties of the different items um, that are going on on the screen. If you're kind of, you know, feeling like you remember um, Captivate or Dreamweaver and that sort of thing, Oh, well, we don't need help with that right now. <laughs> if you remember Dreamweaver and that sort of thing, um, these will kind of lo start looking familiar. This idea of a, a global properties pane where when you click on things, it dynamically changes to help you, um, you know, edit what this says and does and how it looks. So the Captivate um, interface is a little bit more simple than, say, Dreamweaver or Flash, um, and it is fairly user-friendly once you get the hang of it. Uh, there, the default interface is what I have here, and uh, I don't see too many of us needing additional uh, windows and that kind of thing, but if you do need to look around for things like master slides, if you decide to look at quizzes and that sort of thing, which I'll show you in a minute, um, you will be able to bring up and close any of the windows from the window menu at any time. So in our project, if we want to see what it came out as right away, let's go ahead and just do that. And just play this little icon right up here as your preview. And you can preview the project. You can preview any number of the slides. The slides are uh, what's here on the left. Um, you can preview it in a web browser, see what it looks like in a web browser. Or you just preview the project just to see what happens, um, you know, what you got out of this. Now remember I chose an assessment, so it's thinking assessment as we're clicking and as we're doing things. I didn't really plan ahead um, as I was talking through this, but Captivate was. It's pausing and waiting. Select document pane. Okay. Now this may or may not be what I wanted it to do. I will warn you, it's not as smart as it thinks it is sometimes. Uh, so sometimes it's giving you captions that aren't quite what you wanted to do and aren't necessarily making sense. And you may have to edit those, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. But for now, this is what it did. Click gallery scroller, click heading to button. As I do those things, that's what it's doing for me. And I can actually go back and show you what happens if I don't do it right. It's waiting for me. Maybe I'm over in it. Now you'll notice it's giving you a hint. This is what you're supposed to click on, right? So we're playing it. Let's get it to a point where it's going to wait for me again. Click gallery scroller button. Well, there's the hint, but let's say that I don't know. It gives you a little red box here. No, you didn't do it right. Click the scroll, <laughs> scroll over. And it won't let me continue until I do what it tells me to do. And now that I have, again, no, click that, click that. Okay, I guess I get it. There's your training. There's your interactive training. Uh, dream, er, <laughs> Captivate has done a lot of the hard work for you. Click the little X to close. Um, but Obviously, maybe it didn't quite get like this document pane thing. I didn't really want that. I'm not quite sure what it was saying there, especially with the spot collection bit in the way. It was sort of odd. So maybe I don't want him there. I could go to this um, 
slide here in my slide view and just delete this slide altogether. I can right click on these things and add things, delete things all day long. And if I like this, I can make a duplicate of it and change some things around and I can have two of them. Um, totally your choice. Or if you'd like to just move this and have it do something else, or at least get it out of the way of this weird menu, you could move the mouse and the instructions so that they show up in different places. Each one of these little items, the highlight box, the click box, which is really the part I want to, uh, you know, I'm concerned about. If I want people to click there instead of over here, that's a minor change, but, you know, it could be important to your users who could be confused that this is on top of uh, a menu that's been opened. Um, let's see what happens when I uh, view this, oops, when I view this project now. I'm going to play this slide. Actually, this doesn't work like it. Adobe Captivate 4. I'm going to go ahead and just do the whole thing again. View it from the project so that I can get back to that point and test it out and see what happens. If it does it the way I think it should, then it should have moved my box. And um, it sure did. Select Document Pane. Okay, now I did it right and it shows what I want. Same thing here. If I didn't like this, if I didn't like what it said, even, you can click on these, double click on them, and change what it says. This is a very simple way to do what looks like a pretty sophisticated uh, interactive um, with Adobe Captivate. It can be a really useful little tool to, uh, to try. I highly recommend even just playing around with it, even if you don't use it for this course. Um, it is a really fun tool to get to know. And as I said, it's, it's getting pretty popular. So there are a lot of people out there that are looking for people with some Captivate experience. So it could be really handy to get to know. It also does things like quizzes. You can add question slides that can do a number of things, do multiple choice, they can be graded. Um, this content can be exported and imported into other programs like Blackboard or Moodle, which could be really handy. So you could create uh, e-learning content right in Captivate and bring it straight into your learning management system. Uh, so there are a lot of advantages to doing um, all sorts of things with Captivate that might be accomplished well with other tools as well. Um, but, you know, Captivate kind of makes a pretty click, a slick interface. It's not bad. So, here is, here's a question, for example. It's kind of large on my laptop screen, but you can see, you know, type the answer here. A or B, and the answer, not the answer. This is the correct answer, right? I can change what these things say, whether it's correct or incorrect. Again, all of my different uh, properties are over here, including a quiz properties area, whether it's graded, ungraded, maybe I change my mind, maybe it's not graded anymore. Uh, maybe I can allow for multiple answers. Maybe I want one, two, threes instead of ABCs, those kinds of things. All this is going to be um, available here in the quiz properties section. Also, um, if you didn't know, project info, just like Flash, you can um, see some of the things that are just going on that are available. You can see how long it's taking, how many slides, how large it is, that sort of thing. So this could be some sort of um, review area like giving you this information. No, you didn't do this correctly or not. Those sorts of things. So this is a multiple choice question. You'll see I, since I selected three different um, question item, items, I get three different slides, one for each question. And I can do the same sorts of things. You know, type the question, 
whatever it is, the sky is blue, etc., and um, so forth and so on. So this is a fill in the blank. You can type the correct phrase after you know completing the sentence below and that sort of thing. And at the end, it's again, you may need to use your uh, quiz properties to check out you know whether this is going to be a continue, a fail, how many level how many uh, failure attempts you get, uh, what happens when um, you know your attempt goes badly, what you know do we go to the next slide? Do we continue? Do we go back? That sort of thing. All those are available under quiz properties. And when you're done, Towards the end of your uh, project, it will throw in a little quiz results slide that will automatically calculate the score, um, you know, what the maximum score available was, how many correct questions you had, and so forth. So this is a great way to add um, a little self-quiz sort of thing into your training um, that you didn't really have to script. With Flash, you kind of have to script a lot of this, and it's not terribly difficult, but you still have to script it and you have to look at code. So if code bugs you and you don't like to look at code, uh, this could be a good avenue for you to try. Um, and we'll go ahead and test this out for just for fun. Let's test our project one more time to see what happened. There is, I will tell you, there are a lot of other things that Captivate does as well. This is a pretty deep program. I'm showing you some real basics to give you an overview of what can be done uh, pretty easily, even if you're brand new to this stuff and you're a little intimidated by it. So, oh, there we go. Here's, there's my question. And, of course, it went straight to question two of six for some reason. I think, oh, it's counting my, uh, whether I'm per correct in my clicks as well as um, my questions here. So there were three different clicks, correct and corrects, and um, quiz questions as well. So a total of six things that I could get wrong or not. That's the answer. I'm done. Correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. That'll work. It'll go to the next thing. I can hit true and see what happens. This was, I just left it that way, type the blank phrase. <laughs> and so now I can see that I am correct. And we'll continue with our training. Click that gallery scroller. Click that heading button. Hey, I got all of them correct. I scored a maximum number of points of 33, and um, I, I passed the quiz. So that is uh, not probably not the best um, simulation I've ever created, but it is definitely uh, something that's within reach of anybody, um, whether they're you know old hats with Captivate or brand new to it. So um, I would definitely, again, encourage you to check this product out. It can be a lot of fun to use, uh, and you can see how accessible it is to just about anybody. So have fun, and we'll see you online.